Here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. You sure? Mm -hmm. You positive? Positive. I don't know if you are. I'm, I am <laughs> positively ready. <laughs> uh, it'll pop up here in a second, or it should, because it's on a little bit of a delay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's see. Let us know when you can see us. It's showing an error. But it should be because of the stream. One of these days, I'm going to get it right and get the timing down. Yeah, we're in. Um, anyway, what is happening, everybody? What's up? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I'm looking at the chat. It's far away. So with this new stream, it's on the opposite. Like, I can't even see the chat. It's far away, and it's on a black background. What is that about? Oh, you're a crybaby. I can't see it. Crybaby pee pee pants sitting here with me. This is the new Sunday Life Hall song. You're just going to sing like throughout it? the entire show? Yeah, what's wrong with that? I'll stab you in the eye. What? Where's the joy in your heart? No, no joy in my heart. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> what is happening, you guys? Uh, good to see everybody here with us. We're still working through the software. Actually, we're probably going to switch to another software um, for our streaming because we want to be able to have guests on in the future. So uh, I'm sure I'll finally figure out the ins and outs of this software, and then I'll have to switch it up, but that's okay. Um, thanks for joining us, everybody. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's our favorite show of the it week. Is. We really like doing it. Favorite so show so far. <laughs> of course, the new, the new No Pants Friday After Dark uh, show that's going to be coming out sometime probably within the next few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. That could that could become our new favorite. I don't know. Could be. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, good to see everybody. It's Sunday. This is our, our live haul show. Uh, we basically break it up into three parts. We go over our numbers for the last week, our actual numbers. Um, actual. actual numbers. You know, sales, costs, Very blah, serious. blah, fees and everything. Actual numbers. Um, then we go through some highlights of you know some of the cool things that we sold over the last week, mm -hmm. um, and then we do our haul and show some of the stuff that we picked up from the last week. Can I have you... good haul stuff this week. I'm super excited. Yeah, you do. Not a single piece of clothing. You know what's funny is I, I did buy a few. I, I bought like ten pieces of clothing, which is not very much. I bought about maybe a hundred items this yeah. week, and that's about the norm. Uh, but no clothing. And I'm not showing you any of the clothing because it's all mediocre. You you had good sales numbers this last week, but I know when you're not that excited about the stuff you sold because you sent me like six things to share. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, she only sent me six. Um, I think part of that's because you have like a much higher volume of stuff you sold to probably lower individual I did. prices. I did. Yep. You're not as excited about those. But whatever. Right. You guys, we put the, the links to our stores in uh, the description down below. So yeah, we only show you the good stuff that we sold usually. But you can see the ugly stuff But too. you can go to our stores anytime you want and look at the solds and see all the stuff that we sold for maybe if we sold something for $20 or whatever. It's just, yeah, we're not going to show it here just because it's not as fun. And, uh, and we're, and we're always kind of talking about like our sales model for each of our stores is higher average sale price. Um, so those are the things that we like to highlight, but obviously if you want to be like stalkerish and like check out our stores and keep an eye on like what we're selling from day to day, you can do that anytime. Right. So we definitely have the lower, uh, priced, uh, bread and butter items too, because obviously you have to have some of that mm -hmm. mixed in with your store to have steady sales every day. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Pop Rocket wants to know who the first guest is. We're not saying, okay? It's going to be a surprise. We actually well, have to reach out to that first guest, guest and make sure that, uh, that person wants to do the show. We, yeah, we haven't determined yet. Uh, we haven't, we haven't booked our first guest yet. Let's say that. We know who we want to be our first guest. We haven't booked them yet. Um, we'll have to decide if we want to let people know who's going to be our first guest before we actually do the show. We'll, we'll decide that because we'll, you know, kind of have to weigh like, do we like the mystery of it or do we want to be able to promote it uh, before the actual show? So it's kind of like, you know, right. how do you find like which one's going to be better? I think there's pros and cons both ways because, you know, I like I like a good old mystery. I like the promoting too, though, yeah. sometimes. We'll yeah, see. you would. I do. You would. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so but before we get started today, we did have a couple of things that we wanted to share that we were excited about. We had some fun little things happen this week. Yeah, so I want to share, so we got, you know, people send us stuff, but we also have, we have a little buddy here in town, we have a little friend, 
who is kind of one of our favorite little friends who lives here in town, uh, daughter of, of our friends. Her name is Ariella. She's five. She's adorable. And we, you know, we're friends with her parents. And so we get to hang out with her sometimes. Mm -hmm. And she thinks we're pretty A-OK. -okay. And I actually got a phone call like randomly a few weeks ago. The phone rang and it was her, it said that her mom was calling. So I picked it up and I'm like, what's up? And it was this tiny little voice that was like, hi, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> and then she started asking me about what kind of, what my favorite animal was and what kind of socks I like. And it turned out she was uh, sock shopping and was very adamant about she was getting. at the store with her mom and decided she wanted to buy Miss Katie and yes. Miss Vicky socks. Yes, she was very adamant about making sure that we each got a pair of socks, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was it was a really funny conversation. And so then we went over there um, the other night, and she couldn't even wait for us to get in through the door. She like came outside, and met like, us met us outside the front door with her presence. Yeah, with her presence. And but first, I I really want to show the cards that we got. So she calls us uh, Miss Vicky and Miss Katie. Mm -hmm. And so this is the amazing... Her mom's a teacher, so, you know, she's, she's very polite. Yeah, so this is the awesome card I got, okay? Uh, I believe I am the one mine. with the dark... Hold on, I'm showing mine. I'm the one with the dark hair. I believe she is the middle one with... I think they're supposed to be little pigtails. And then I believe Vicky is the one uh, all the way over there with the, with the pink hair. Mm -hmm. And if you want to show yours. And this is mine. This is her with the pigtails and me with the pink hair. Uh, Barbara... So Barbara says, hey, I just realized I got a wrench. Barbara, I, I, I switched you over. Uh, I added you as a moderator, and I was I actually said to Vicky, I'm like, let's see how long it takes before she notices. So took you a little while, Barbara. Took you a little while. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this says, from Ariella, it says, I love you. Have another play date with me, and I like your dogs. And then it says, us blowing bubbles on Easter at your house. So uh, this is, so that's a little drawing. I had fashioned, taken like a wire hanger and fashioned a, a giant uh, wand out of it. And we were attempting to <laughs> blow bubble, make giant bubbles in the backyard. Uh, but anyway, she's really cute. What's yours say? Mine says, I like the color of your hair and I like you. I want you to come and have a play date so we can bake cookies together. <laughs> and there's a little picture. Cookies. There's a picture of cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cute. Anyway, and then we got socks. What socks did you get? I got some uh, green eggs and ham knee socks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're really cute. I'm very excited. Yep. I will wear these too. Yep. And then my socks, uh, on the bottom, they say Trash Panda. And then what's really awesome is it actually has, uh, it has uh, raccoons on it that are like, it's like they're mug shots because they're apparently uh, criminal, criminal trash pandas. Yep. Anyway, but I actually think these are like the most awesome socks ever and I can't wait to wear them. Really, really, really cute. It's very cute. Yeah. They're very cute. That was sweet. So caffeinated Christy wants to know, Vicky, how often do you have to touch up the color on your hair? I do my hair about every, anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. It really starts to need it at around eight or nine weeks. And sometimes I get lazy and then it gets that really soft cotton candy color pink as it fades. Yeah. I kind of um, like the different, I like how it looks when it, when it fades. Like it's not, I know that you'll be like, oh, if you can see the roots and everything, but it actually, I think the color, uh, like the way it fades actually looks kind of cool. Mm -hmm. This is four weeks right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah. Oatmeal cookies. Never. Yummy. No to oatmeal cookies. <laughs> no. All right. So what else do we want to talk about real quick? Oh, and then you wanted to talk about, tell your story. Tell your story. Oh this my God. Really, okay, really good, so this, this made my week. So most of you guys have been watching us for a while. And do you remember my uh, taxidermy fox called Herman? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we had Herman with the little cute face. And he was the fox that we had over our face shoulder. Like? It was like he, was like, he looked a little scared. Uh, so hopefully you guys remember Herman. So I got a note, uh, actually a comment on Instagram earlier this week from the person who bought Herman. And it was the coolest thing. Um, so Herman, you sold Herman like back in April. I, or I sold right? Herman in April and he went to New York and when I packaged him up, I put a little note in that said his name was Herman. Didn't really think much of it. Um, other than that, you know, I just wanted, I don't know. I really liked Herman. I wanted the new owner to recognize that. So this woman found me years and years late, years and years, months and months later mm -hmm. And sent me a note. She commented on my little post on Instagram that had said that I had sold him and he was going to his new home in New York. 
And uh, she's a woman that collects taxidermy. And I think she actually restores some and, and creates some taxidermy vignettes herself. Um, but she kept his name as Herman. And uh, he's her favorite purchase ever. And she actually created an Instagram page for him. Uh, and it's Herman and Rosie. It's Herman underscore and underscore you guys, Rosie, Rosie is a raccoon and Herman now has a bow tie. Herman and Rosie. If you're on Instagram, you need to totally follow them because it's the cutest thing ever. Uh, so, and, and here's what's really great is that Herman, uh, Rosie is a raccoon. There's Herman and Rosie together. You guys, how amazing is this? You need to immediately stop what you're doing right now. I don't care what you're doing. Yes. I know you're watching us. You can put us on pause, whatever. Go and follow. Herman and Rosie, it's Herman underscore and underscore Rosie. Follow them because seriously, she has the funniest and cutest different animals. Uh, here's like a little, some sort of little pig. It's a felted pig, yeah. Yeah, felted pig. Uh, anyway, super cute. That was the best message I've ever gotten from a buyer, um, I have to say. I think her name was Isla. Um, I don't have her name right in front of me, uh, but she messaged me or commented on that. We had a few little uh, comments back and forth. And I'm so excited that Herman went to someone that appreciates him as much as I did. Yeah. So that was sure. a really, really cool post. Uh, um, but guess what? Allison, she just gave a super chat for $2.69 oh. and said, buy yourself a sausage McMuffin. Okay. I don't like sausage McMuffins, Allison. Yeah, we're aware, okay? <laughs> Here's what happened. Here's why Allison is saying that. <laughs> Allison, when she was here for Open, uh, she discovered basically the nightmare that my life is here, okay? Because here's the thing. Somebody in this house, not me, but somebody in this house, likes to preemptively throw things out before you are done with them. And I believe that Allison had gotten herself two sausage McMuffins. She ate one of them and the other she was hoping to save for later for a tasty treat at another time. Well, she went to go get her sausage McMuffin probably like, I don't know, 24 hours later. And it was gone. It was like two days later. It wasn't the next day. No, it was two days later. We got those sausage McMuffins. It was like after midnight. Okay. It was after midnight. And so it had, okay, let's, it had maybe been 30 hours. <laughs> it was still something that she could have eaten. And you decided, you took it upon yourself to throw out someone else's sausage McMuffin. This is what she does, guys. This is what she does. Yes, she either, horrible. she either throws things out or she puts them away before you are done using them. And you're like, you turn around, you're like, what, what just happened to that thing I had out that I was using? And she'll be like, I put it away. Ridiculous. I'm sorry that I like to be neat. Ridiculous. There's a there's a timing here, okay? And you, yeah, see, Sandra's an all caps thief. <laughs> Jennifer, she should have put her name on it apparently, but I don't think that would have mattered. Vicky would have been <laughs> like, I'm not. doing her a favor. She's gonna die if she eats this. <laughs> Probably. Do we, do we so. want to talk about the sour cream? Nope. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> uh, so rude. Exactly. Uh, Data says very rude. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Allison says, "WTF? It was one. Don't try to, don't try to move on. Okay, don't try to take the spotlight off of you because this is you're why feeling we have like two-hour shows. On because Sundays. you're feeling full of guilt. You know what? We are going to talk about the sour cream. Uh, how do you feel about sour cream in tubs? Gross. So this one over here will only get sour cream that's in the squeeze bottle, but mm -hmm. she thinks it's gross after one use. So basically, she makes us buy a squeeze bottle if we're going to get sour cream. Let's, go, let's say we're going to have tacos or burritos or something. She wants sour cream. I have to mm -hmm. get it in the squeeze uh, thing. And then after one time, I have to be like, seriously, I have to like check the fridge like uh, pretty regularly to make sure that it isn't gone. Because I want to use the sour cream after it's been used one time. I would like to continue to use the sour cream that I purchased. Uh, but this one over here... If you're not watching, she will go and she will throw it away because somehow after one use, it's, gross. it's bad. It's gross. See? It's gross. It's gross. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay? Um, All right, guys. We're going to move on because I feel like I've properly humiliated her enough. Well, not you, don't, you don't really seem like you're that guilty, though. Nope. Not at all. Yeah. See? Reseller Project says, out of control. All caps. Out of control. And I agree. Out of control. So you see, guys? Do you see what I have to go through? And she can talk about me being a little cluttery, 
But I feel like, you know, it's a give and take. No. It's a give and take, okay? Mm-mm. It's a give and take. Listen, if I had my way, this office would look spotless. Whatever. So rude. So rude. I think my favorite see? quote is on my side. Christy says, there's no way to see if the sour cream in the tube is bad. Just saying. <laughs> Absolutely right. That's why you only use it once. You open it, you use it, and throw it away. No. No. Mm-hmm. Chris, okay, but I think after two days, you can feel pretty confident that it's probably going to be okay. It's probably okay. Anyway, nope. all right, so uh, so we talked to you guys about Herman. Definitely go follow that uh, that account because seriously, it's adorable. Give her some love, so hopefully she'll do more more of that stuff because we think it's really fun. Um, all right, do you want to talk about? Uh, do you want to go ahead and, and? Oh wait, did I? Did you what? Okay, no, never mind. I was looking at something wrong. Um, all right, are you ready to talk about numbers? You want me to go yeah. first, or do you want to go first? Do we want to talk about these things right no, here? No, that was notes? from before. That oh. was weird. See the line? Isn't that oh, clear? Different show, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So we're going to get into talking about our sales numbers, but there was another thing that I wanted to address um, because somebody had posted earlier today on the boss group. They were talking about wanting, you know, really wanting to quit their job and asking about like what it would take to be able to replace a $60,000 a year salary and, and all that stuff. They got some great and advice. So, I mean, Rick, Rick Dorn uh, actually spelled it out exactly correct. Yeah. So we've talked before about like when we show our numbers here, we've, we've, we've discussed this before, but I thought it warranted us going over it again. Um, that when we share our numbers on here, it's really just a snapshot of how we're doing in our stores. It's not really the full picture. And here's why. Um, we don't use these numbers for our accounting. Accounting, it goes, you know, when we do our taxes and stuff, it goes much deeper than this. And there's a couple of different ways when you do, uh, when you have your own business and you have a, you know, do a reselling business, there's a couple of different ways that you can account for your inventory costs, right? Um, and so one of the ways is, uh, an accrual method. Now, when you do the accrual m- method, it's actually, it's a little bit more complicated because what you're doing is you're actually, uh, deducting your inventory only when it sells. And so what that entails is that you have to account for the value of your inventory at the beginning of the year, yeah. the value of your inventory at the end of the year, Correct. and you have to track with every item that you sell what that cost, what the cost of that particular item was for you. Um, and so most, most, uh, CPAs are going to say that they would prefer you to do it that way because it does give, I guess, a better picture. It gives a more accurate representation of your, of your numbers. And it actually allows you to see a more Mm -hmm. accurate representation of your numbers. But that being said, it is, not always the best way for you to do that if you're selling mostly used items or mostly one-off items. It's a bit more complicated and complex to do it that way, and it's a little more time-consuming. Yeah, There are plenty of people that like to do it that way, but there are plenty of people that like to do it the way that we do it and the way that my accountant and Katie's yeah. accountant does it as well, and that's just an inventory deduction. Uh, it's kind of it's like yeah. a cash basis is what it's called, and that's what we use when we show um, kind of what we're showing when we show our weekly snapshot of our numbers. When we show um, our weekly snapshot, we are showing it like it's an accrual method, which is not how we actually do our taxes. So, because we are only showing uh, our cost of goods of the items that we actually sold. So, for instance, this week I sold 31 items. I am only showing my cost of goods as those items that I sold. So, it's kind of the accrual method. But in reality, I do the cash method when I do my taxes because there's no way that I'm going to track my individual cost of goods throughout the whole year, do an inventory account at the beginning of the year, do an inventory account at the end of right. the year. I just don't want to do it That's that way. If you have uh, brand new items and you are working on a depreciation method, if your value of goods depreciates yearly, that's an excellent way to do it. Uh, using the type of inventory that Katie and I both have, that's not the most effective way. And as we both said before, we're not down with the whole minutia of the, yeah, uh, you know, per item but it definitely changes things because so. let's say for the whole calendar year, let's say I spend a total of uh, $30,000, $40,000 on inventory, mm-hmm. um, but I only sell the stuff that uh, for everything I actually sold for that year, maybe I only spent $15,000. Um, so it's like it's going to look differently on your numbers because you because of the way that you're handling it. So because of the way we do it with the cash you would deduct that whole $40,000 from your entire year because that's what you spent on inventory overall. And then you don't deal with the depreciation stuff. So right. blah, okay. blah, blah, blah. Enough. Enough yeah, with the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Amanda asks, when we do our weekly numbers, do we calculate any returns we may have had that week in them? No, we don't. Um, and not for any reason other, other than, um, you know, we do not need to, we don't have the time to spend to do a minute 
prep of the numbers to the penny every single week. You're getting the overall picture. Of course, there are returns to be calculated at some point. We both get only a few. Yeah. Um, I had one this week for $23, so I didn't know I didn't. Yeah, so no, we, we never do do that. So um, it also doesn't calculate our overhead or the store subscription or lots of other things, too. So uh, know that what you're getting is just a Snapchat to show you. or Snapchat? A snap, Snapchat <laughs> is just a snapshot, snapshot to show you uh, what the cost of the actual goods that are selling every week is. Yeah. And and that's why we tell people don't, that's not like not the numbers that you're going to use to do your taxes. There's a lot, it's a lot more involved when you do that. So this is just the snapshot to show you the actual th things that we're showing every week. So, and then we, let's leave it at that because we've okay. discussed it to death already. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share the mm -hmm. screen. We're going to get real tiny down in the corner and well, Pop Rocket, they, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, asks, can we share our annual numbers? What gross is reported to the IRS? Well, your gross that is reported is every penny that you take in yeah. from all of your uh, your venues. Your gross and your net are two different things. So, I mean, we've always shared our numbers. My gross numbers last year were $100,000. It was actually 99980 something mm -hmm. across two or, uh, two or three platforms. This year, I'm on track to do one hundred and thirty to 140000 gross across two platforms. Um, so yeah, I mean, gross, but we have no problem sharing. We share all of our stuff. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. Katie, I think you were close to what I did last year. I think Katie was like 90, 90. Yeah, I was, I was under there. Yeah. But, uh, and that's the thing that, you know, I've talked about, you know, Mark with Notre Dame CPA, like he really makes it super easy because he just gives you the spreadsheet. You just enter in all the information and then he takes care of it from there. So it's like really great. Um, and it's all kind of broken down. All right, let's go over to our numbers. So here is for the, the this last week ending yesterday, because we do the last seven full days of sales. Um, I had 25 outgoing eBay orders and six Etsy orders. Uh, my Etsy's slowed down a little bit. So a total outgoing orders, 31. My eBay gross sales, $1,725.30. My Etsy gross sales, $403.45 for a total gross of $2,128.75. My shipping costs, $138.58. My promotion fees between eBay and Etsy, $70.43. And then you can see that the fees are calculated out there for each of those. So my total costs, $452.36. And then my cost of goods, roughly about $255. Um, and that puts my total net sales after costs at $1,421.39. My gross average sale price is uh, $68.67, um, which I'm pretty happy with. I, you know, I always try to be, stay above uh, $50, so I'm super happy with that. And my net average sale price, uh, $45.85. So you can see if a chunk comes out of each one of those items um, on average from all my costs and costs of goods. Um, all right, let's jump on over to you. So mine was down a little bit this week from last. Uh, it's starting to catch up with us, or at least with me, that I have not uh, listed very much at all in the last six weeks. So this week I am buckling down and getting my listing done. Uh, so 45 eBay orders, two Etsy for a total of 47 orders. Uh, for $2,205 on eBay, $157 in change on Etsy. For a total of $2,363 and change. My shipping costs were $260. Promoted fees or promoted um, listing fees of $48. eBay final value fees of $295. Etsy fees of $1420. For a total of $617 and change. My cost of goods was $297, which is a little high for me. I'm usually just under 10% of my uh, gross sales for my cost of goods. So I had a couple that were a little high. And then my total net sales, $1,448 or $1,449 or so. $50 gross average sale price, which is pretty good. And then $30 a net. So for me, this is a little bit off. My numbers were a little lower than I, I prefer, but I blew out a lot of lower dollar gold items this week for sure. Yep. Yeah, we were we, we were like only like $20 apart on our uh, net. 20, $27 apart mm -hmm. on our nets there. Pretty yep. cool. Pretty cool, man. Anyway, those are our numbers for the week. And uh, let's see. Hello, hip flipping mama. What's happening? Hey, Kelly. What's happening, mama? Had a nice 45-minute chat with Miss Miss Kelly this morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Uh, okay, so let's uh, move on and do some of our highlights of our solds for the week. Yeah, so we have a little less because basically Vicky sends me the ones that she wants me to highlight and then I just throw up the same amount. So Well, I have a bigger haul this week too. So I But you to sold a lot. Like, like I did. Volume-wise, I sold a lot. Volume-wise, yeah. I sold a lot. A lot of it was like $30 and $40 items. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> Look what's happening, guys. You can see my real numbers right here. It's been a rough, this last uh, 30 days has been a little rough for me. Mm -hmm. Not going to lie. Um, all right, let's close that and go to uh, your first item. Are we sharing this already? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I guess we weren't. I was. I thought we were. Sorry, I wasn't on the right screen. Uh, there you go. All right. So I paid $5 for this at a garage sale, and it sold for the price that you see right there. So this is uh, older electronics. Uh, it was uh, new and unused, but the box was open. So I did put the condition as open box. Um and there was an extra transfer cord. You can see that I, I did put a note that I included the transfer cord that it was extra. So old um, technology still sells. Um, I had used to have one of these. I hadn't used it in forever. I don't. I know I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Um, but it sold for ninety five dollars. And this shipped in a box in a bag. Actually, it was about two pounds, but it was small, so it shipped uh, in the box that it was in. Put it in a bag and it shipped cubic rate two for eight dollars and ninety two cents. Nice. Uh, I don't know if any of you, any of the rest of you guys, remember these zip drives. I remember when we got one; it was a big deal because I could actually load. You could actually load programs onto the zip drive. It wasn't just you know mm -hmm. uh, you because normally you put like a floppy disk in and you'd have to like install the program onto your computer and it would take up space in your computer. Back when you didn't have these gigantic hard drives. And uh, I was pretty excited because I could load up my King's Quest Five on the old zip yeah. drive, and my dad wouldn't yell because he would always be like, "The computer's running really slow. We better delete some files. You gotta delete some programs, Katie. He's really slowing down the computer." He didn't really know anything about computers. He was just convinced that that was what it meant. If it was slow, it probably had something to do with extra Fair files. Enough. Gotta get rid of these extra files. And then good old Tom Zilverberg would go in. He just like be deleting stuff willy nilly. And uh, next thing you know, it'd be like really important, like you didn't have the operating like it system. Wouldn't even work anymore, <laughs> which is actually why when I first went to college uh, in '97, I was going in for uh, computer science because I was so good at like figuring stuff out on a computer. From half, dad's screen. Well, half like. of it was just because our old Packard Bell computer, like you know, it wouldn't work a lot of times when I try to like install a program, so I'd have to go in and change code and stuff. But the other half of the time, it was because my dad would randomly delete files, and I would have to figure out how to make the computer work again. So, yeah. So there's a question in there. It. Bridget, Vicki, how do you find items if you don't have an inventory system? Uh, both Sandra um, and Dana answered that. It's absolutely true. I just, I know exactly where everything is. Um, if you ask me where an item is, I will tell you what shelf and what part of the garage it, yeah. is, it is in. I, you know, because I do my <laughs> own, uh, I put everything away myself and I also ship everything myself. So I know where everything is because I've put it there. So, yeah. um the reality is, though, you do have a system of sorts. Like, you have... It's not like, like items go together. Not, right, like items go together. So it's not like you just have everything everywhere, and you and then you have this crazy, brilliant mind that you're like, I know where that particular hat is. It's like, no, you have two tubs that only have hats, and then you have a tub that only has T-shirts, and then you have a tub that only has this, and then you have all your jackets hanging up. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's so... As for far the, as the hard goods go, like, I keep all of my Christmas items together. I'll keep all of my dolls in one space. I will keep all of my household goods in one space. Yeah. All the china goes on one shelf. So... I do have a system of sorts. It's just not. It's a, not like a B seventy two. Yeah. Whatever. So bingo. <laughs> All right, let's go back to this. Uh, okay, so first one I have up is this um, Harley Davidson three D emblem T shirt. I'm sure some of you probably remember me getting this like a while back. Uh, this is a women's one, and so it doesn't tend to sell for as much. And it also, I think, was was super super tiny. Um, but anyway, still a cool 3D emblem t-shirt. I just accepted yesterday, I accepted an offer for $80, plus you can see the sleeve there was, the, was coming undone, but I accepted an offer for $80, and they did, they did pay, it'll ship out tomorrow, but I think that's pretty good. Like, I basically paid, it came in, like, a whole box of stuff, so I probably paid, like, about $10 for it, took an offer for $80. I've had it listed for a couple of months now, this is, like, really cool, uh, it looks like 1985, Harley Davidson 3D emblem t-shirt. So it didn't go for as much as some of like the men's 3D emblem t-shirts can go for, but still pretty That's sweet. That's a good price for pretty a... Pretty sweet flip. Yeah, it's a good price for a, a women's Harley yeah, shirt. Yeah, for sure. All right, here you go. 
So I'm not sure if I've sold, showed these or not before. I have sold these once before. I believe I sold them for $75 and then they, they didn't get paid for. So I may have showed these in a, uh, in a Sunday before and I apologize if I have. The good thing is, is that this time they sold for more money. They sold for $95 and they shipped internationally. So the buyer paid shipping. Um, so they sold for $95 plus shipping. The first time they sold for $75 or $80, I believe, and they were uh, domestic and they didn't get paid for. So I'm showing them again. There you go. There you go. Uh, I'm getting in trouble from Dana. So she says, I'm rude that you do have a crazy, brilliant mind. Yes, she does. Well, yes, yes, It's I just do, not the kind where she has 2,500 <laughs> items individually in her brain exactly where they are just randomly. Uh, but yes, yeah, she's pretty smart. She's wicked smart. I am wicked smart. Wicked smart. Um... All right, so it looks like Allison got to go open up the shaved ice stand. I wish I could have some. Uh, I could go for a lime shaved ice right now. I like grape. I like grape, too. Grape and, and uh, lime. Two favorites. All right, so next up is this uh, rat t-shirt from that big haul of uh, vintage rock t-shirts I got from Barry. And I think I've sold like five or six of them now. I think I've gotten, I think I'm at my tipping point now where I pretty much made all my money back. Mm -hmm. I paid $1,000 for 30 t-shirts. Uh, I've sold like six or seven of them. I think I'm over, I'm, I'm definitely over the thousand dollar mark now. So everything after this will be profit. Um, but this is another one. Uh, I took an offer for 80. I gotta say like some of these rat t-shirts, when you look at the comps, they don't go for a crazy amount of money. Um, so I think the other, the other rat one, I think I got. What I didn't realize is that this one has Robin Crosby on it before he died. So that's probably would have been a, that's Robin Crosby's photo. So that's, um, that would have been a good selling point. I don't know that you ever put it. No, but I think anybody who would that. care to that level would already mm -hmm. know which stuff he's on and be looking True. for it. So I don't think I would need to have that in there. But um, but anyway, so so yeah, so I, I took an offer for eighty. Again, I was you know trying to get my sales and moving, but uh, I was happy with that. So not too shabby. All right, next one for you. Uh, so this one I took an offer for eighty five dollars on. Don't you love when somebody offers you something real close to your price? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I took an offer for eighty five dollars. I paid ten dollars for this at that hoarder house that Dorothy had purchased out. Um, I only have a few items left from that. I've sold almost everything. Um, I paid ten dollars. It was before she purchased the contents of the house. I cherry picked and bought some good stuff. Um, eighty dollars plus the buyer paid fifteen dollars shipping. It cost about twelve dollars shipping. Uh, so yeah, I didn't have a problem charging a flat mm -hmm. shipping fee on it. Uh, I think it went to Utah or California. I'm not sure which, but either way. Yeah. Uh, sold. Uh, I was just looking over at Victoria Smith. So she remembers buying a new computer with a 1.5 uh, gigabyte hard drive and an external hard drive and telling the world that she would never, ever need more storage, which <laughs> I think is pretty funny. Um, like our phones have 20. 40 times that amount of storage. I know, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. And then they still run out of room. Uh, okay, next one up. Guys, remember this jacket? I just, was it last week that I showed this? Or the week before? Was it the last week or the week before? I actually got this. This is one of the items I got when we were in Washington for camp. Um, and I remember I paid up a little bit for it. It was new with tags. I believe it was like priced at like $18 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I showed this, I believe I said I was hoping I would get like at least a hundred dollars for it. Um, it didn't actually get listed until this last week. And so I think it was only up for maybe a couple of days and I sold it for the full sale price of one thirty nine ninety nine, and it went to Italy Ooh. So they paid $140 and then they paid another hundred and like twenty three fifty to have they it paid shipped. Another hundred and sorry, twenty three fifty. Like what? <laughs> yes. You know. Did Dude. you hand deliver it? Anyway, they paid they paid over $160 total for the jacket to have it shipped. Uh and so now I know Italy can be a little iffy sometimes, so I did go ahead and purchase insurance for this, mm -hmm. which was like two dollars. Um, and I, yet still, because I use pirate ship, the label and the insurance was still only like $19. So I still made like an extra five bucks on the, on the shipping. Um, so it was all good. But anyway, I was pretty happy with that sale. So I love it when I sell something for even What'd more, you pay for it? more than what I predict. I think it was like priced at like $17.99 and then it was, mm -hmm. uh, we, we went on like a Friday. So I think I paid like, it was 20% off of that. Cool. So very cool. Right. I wanted to answer Allison's burn there. She's like, oh, yeah, if I made you uh, shaved ice, I'd have to throw it out before you get a chance to eat it. <laughs> Thanks, Allison. Uh, that's pretty funny. She said, um, she said ice burn. 
<laughs> so this jacket sold within an hour of me listing it. So I listed it uh, yesterday and sold it yesterday. It was uh, relatively cheaply priced for what it is. This is a brand name that you should look for with jeans, jackets, that type of thing. Nudie Jeans Company. They make uh, clothing for men and women. Um, but it's a higher end, one of the more expensive brands. Um, and they do sell very well. This had some damage. It was really broken in and had a, a hole in the elbow. But even with that disclosure, I figured I was going to get about $75 for it. It would eventually go on sale. Uh, so I listed it and it sold within an hour uh, for $100. That's awesome. So they're having, the, they're very high priced in brand new condition. So I had only paid, I think, $7 for it. Mm -hmm. I just picked it up last week. Not too shabby. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to head on over to uh, Etsy for me, for the rest of mine. Um, so this is, uh, just a hoodie that I think I've had this up for a handful of months. It's been up for a while, maybe six months. And, uh, but this is just a vintage hoodie from Sun Microsystems. So this is like vintage tech. I think vintage tech does really well, like t-shirts and sweatshirts and jackets. Um, so it's from 1994 and it's the, uh, it's the Sun Up 1994 Caribbean, I guess it was like a Caribbean cruise or something for people that worked for Sun Microsystems. Sun Microsystems. It was yeah. a company cruise. I guess so. That's funny. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Um, so I've had it for, you know, had it listed for a while, um, but let's go ahead and see what I actually sold it for. We'll go over and look at Flipper Tools. By the way, uh, some people were commenting last week that Flipper Tools no longer has the eBay prices on them. And I did see a post by uh, Flipper Tools. They are not going to have the eBay prices on them for quite a while. Okay. Uh, if ever again, because eBay has discontinued the, um, the API that allowed them to do it. And huh. so they no longer have the ability to show the sold prices, Interesting. Uh, whether that's because eBay doesn't want a third party to have that information or not. I'm not sure, but they did say that until they're willing to provide that, they can't show it. So, well, I wonder if, I wonder if uh Terra peak shows that though, I'm assuming. <sighs> I don't believe it does. You don't think it shows uh actual they never used to best offer prices they never used to so i don't hmm. i i haven't looked into it enough to be honest with you i'll have to look it up like some of my old listings and just see if it if it shows um anyway i so i sold this for 47.99 and uh so i was pretty happy with that but yeah you don't don't overlook like the old tech stuff like vintage tech um anything that's like a tech company mm -hmm. um particularly like from the 90s well 80s and 90s um but even some of the early 2000s stuff uh you know people really really uh, will spend up for it Oh, Chris so. says it's on Terra Peak. So, all right, maybe it does show your actual sold price if there's a best offer taken. I'm not sure. Oh, she says um, maybe it isn't. Oh, so. <laughs> okay, maybe it isn't. <laughs> I get. We'll we'll look into that. I mean, it's important for comps. So, I would hope that if if it doesn't show on Terra Peak, then that's something we should be giving feedback to eBay about because mm -hmm. their whole thing about Terra Peak is that we're getting this. It's like this great tool for us to use uh, to price things, and it's like it's not. It's no good to price something if you can't see what it actually sold for. If it's sold through best. Well, offer. here's the thing. Um, anybody that is using Terapeak, I suggest you go to their website and use your eBay login to use their, it on their website, as opposed to going under the research tab and using it on eBay directly. The research tab on eBay directly has a very consolidated version of Terapeak. Mm -hmm. You do have a more um, in-depth version of Terapeak available to you on their website, still for free. Uh, it's just the one that you're accessing through their um, through the research button on your seller hub is is a truncated version of the of the program. Yeah, so we'll have to look into that because that's definitely something that you know eBay owns Terapeak now, so they should. Uh, if, if the whole idea is to give us a a tool to be able to better price our items, they really need to yeah, be showing they, and they, prices. You know, they bought Terapeak, they changed it. It is not as good as it once was when it was a paid mm -hmm. service, but it's still pretty good for a free service. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go to your next one. So I purchased this for $10. I did sell this uh, on sale or best offer. I think I sold it under best offer for $175. Uh, it's not showing that here. So I did take an offer for 175. When it's on sale, if I do a 30% off sale, that's exactly what it's at. So I paid $10, it sold for 175, uh, shipped it out to the customer in New York. Uh, this was new without tags. It had some, uh, you know, the inner tags were still there. The pockets were still shown shut, the, shut. The, um, the rear seam in the back was, was still sewn shut. So it was very obvious that it was a new and unworn um, jacket. And I picked this up back in April, I believe, when uh, Lorna was here. It's very fancy. Yeah, it's pretty cool looking. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yep. 
All right, next one for me, another Harley Davidson t-shirt. So remember I got a whole bunch of these t-shirts from Barry um, with a whole bunch of other stuff, but I had gotten uh, three black ones, all the black ones sold, and I had three of these blue ones. And so this is the first one of these blue ones that has sold. And they're just really cool. Um, I like this, I, I kind of call it like stone wash because um, it's not like tie dye really, but it's yeah, cool. it's like that older stone wash shirt. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so these are from the 90s. Just super cool shirt. And I sold this for $69.99. And I think I actually, I think this did go international as well. I think it went to, um, I believe it went to Australia. Hmm. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. 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 So this went to Australia. Um, so again, they paid like 20 something to have it shipped. Um, but man, this was definitely a good buy, all these t-shirts. So I still have a couple more of these left and then a couple other colors. Um, but you've sold a lot of them. Yeah. Well, I sold all the black ones. So this is the first of the blue ones that has gone. Um, so I still have a couple more left, but, uh, they're really cool shirts. I like the design on them a lot. I think it looks really cool. Um, anyway, next one for you. So I only had two, um, two sales on Etsy this week, and this was the only one that was of any type of uh, interest, really. This was a men's sweater that uh, sold. I picked this up. I honestly can't remember where I picked it up. I'm sure it was a Savers. I didn't pay much for it. This would have been something I would have picked up for under $7. Uh, this is men's. Um, it really is one of those unisex sweaters, though. The zipper goes in the back, not in the front. Oh, that's weird. Um, it goes in the back of the neck. And so definitely vintage 70s. And I sold it for, let's see, sold for $89.95, plus it went to France. Oh, nice. So they did pay international shipping, and I did make a little bit of money on the shipping uh, because I used pirate ship. Yep, absolutely. We're just going to keep uh, bugging you guys, telling you you should be doing your own international shipping because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it, you make a lot more money that way. Um, and the, all the money, extra money that you make more than makes up for the once or twice a year when you have maybe a little bit of a hassle around an item, but it really doesn't happen very often. To be I honest. have had more issues domestically with lost, damaged, or, uh, issues with a customer on sales than I have ever had, mm -hmm. uh, internationally. So yep. the people that are afraid of shipping their own items internationally may as well be afraid of shipping their own international, shipping their own items to Des Moines. Yeah. Really that no was a different poll. Yeah. <laughs> I know I am terrified of shipping anything to Des Moines. Mm -hmm. um, okay, guys, I sold another one of the t-shirts uh, from the, the that big t-shirt haul. And this one's actually one that I really liked a lot. I think this is a really super cool. This is one of my favorite ones of all the ones um, that I had from that haul. Um, it's just a really cool design on it. And mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up taking an offer, went back and forth with somebody a couple times. Even with your typo? What typo? You have refuged denied. It's refuge. Well, I'm sure people probably just look for sanctuary t-shirts. So I know. I'm just and saying. Yes. Usually, for the, as far as I know, on Etsy, and this is the same for eBay as well, um, if somebody searches refuge and it has like that D on it, I don't think it would matter. I think it would still show up. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, I had plenty of the people The chat got real it. quiet there. I don't know. Are you guys all alive or did the chat? Yeah. Are you guys alive? What happened? It might not be showing up. No. No. I guess they've, okay. everybody's taking a nap. Apparently. Yesterday was nap day. <laughs> All right. So $150. I took an offer for $150. Um, I think this went domestically. And so I, I had it priced at like 200. So uh, an offer for 150, I was definitely happy with, um, it works for me. And so, uh, yeah, I think that, that, that's probably like my favorite sale of the week. And, oh, here we go. Grammar Nazi incoming. <laughs> um, that was that's a that was a that was a mistype as opposed to a that grammatical wasn't a gram error. It wasn't a grammatical error. It was just that a was type, just a mistype type typo. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, but one hundred fifty dollars. So I, I'm pretty stoked with with where it's going now. I'm definitely uh, any sales from that uh, group of t-shirts is going to be look at uh, now they're all responding. We're focused. Know, right? We're focused. <laughs> Apparently so. It got real quiet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that's it for, that's it for our sense highlights for the week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And again, guys, if you want to stock our stores, uh, you can always go look at uh, both of our eBay stores are, are linked down below. Mm -hmm. I think both of our Etsy stores are linked down below, but our Etsy stores are the same, named exactly the same as our eBay stores. I'm a boutique for him. You are LB Pink Peacock uh, in both eBay and Etsy. So it's like you can look at that stuff anytime that you want. If you mm -hmm. want to get your little calculator out and like calculate our numbers for us, you can do that too. Sure. Um, so we're just super, super transparent when it comes to that stuff. So you can always um, pay attention to like what we're actually selling, um, not just like the best stuff that we like to show so that we can yeah. feel special. We like to show you the highlights. Sure. It's the highlight reel. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, let's see. So Lindsay asked, if you turn off global shipping, does it show on the listing somewhere that international buyers can still purchase from your store? You have to actually set up a business policy or business policies around international shipping. Mm -hmm. You have to turn on international shipping properly. So it's not one or the other. Um, you you know, global shipping is, is one thing and international shipping is another thing. So you do have to take some steps to show that your items yeah. are available for international shipping. Well, and if you don't have business policies, some people don't have their business policies set up. You still have to, you set it up within each individual listing pretty much. You yeah. like have to like choose that. And, you could probably, once you, you set it. up a policy, you should be able to go in and change it. Mm -hmm. And I think you can bulk edit, but I could be wrong on that. It's been, I've always sold internationally, yeah. so I've never had business policies and had to alter them or edit anything like that. I've, I've been selling internationally since yeah. long before business policies existed or online shipping or anything like that. Yeah, so. but basically you, you basically have to have to say that you mm. sell internationally to say what your what your uh, costs are or what you charge for shipping whether you do it um, uh, calculated, calculated or flat rate. flat rate but calculate is really better for international um, and then you have to say if you have any restrictions so neither one of us have any restrictions we ship <laughs> worldwide all countries no restrictions so um, that's basically how we do it but you want to get into the haul you had a pretty good haul this week mm -hmm. so we went on Thursday together and did um, all the savers, mm -hmm. uh, we did Buffalo exchange. Uh, but then, okay. First of all, guys, listen, I may have let her go by herself to somebody, a stranger's house to buy some stuff. Okay. She didn't care. I cut her. I, I could care. have been killed. <laughs> didn't care. Here's the thing. Friday, so Friday, she makes this big deal about how like tomorrow's Saturday. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to do anything. We're just going to work. It's going to be great. We're like, we can sleep in. We can not, I mean, we're sleeping in. So like we still seven, have at seven. seven. I'm like, we can watch Orange is the New Black a couple episodes, like in bed in the morning. It'll be great. And she's like, we can be in our underwear all day. And I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah. Sounds pretty good to me. I'm mm -hmm. like eating it up. I'm like, this, this sounds like the most amazing Saturday ever. Mm -hmm. So then she's done this a few times, guys. Then she's like Saturday morning. She's like, so I set up this meeting on Facebook and I'm going to go get some, and it's like, she's done this before where she doesn't tell me until after she's already decided to do it. And it's like, okay, so now at least an hour of my day is shot because we have to like drive across town to go pick up something for her. And I was, this time I was like, you know what? No. See? See? You know what? No. See? You signed up for See it. how she is? You get kidnapped and murdered. That's your own fault. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I have already yep. set up my day around the idea that I'm going to be in my underwear all day. And you don't just get to decide that you're going to go uh, pick up some stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what? So, yeah, I let her go. I let her go. So we were <laughs> still uh, in bed just waking up, and I was scrolling Facebook Marketplace. I don't do it very often because, find, frankly, I just feel it's just so cluttered. It's ridiculous, especially out here. But I happened to see um, a listing pop up for uh, a bunch of vintage board games from, like, the 30s to the 50s. Mm. And they wanted $3 a piece for them, and there were five of them. So I was like, well, that's a really good deal. Even if, and a couple of them I know off the top of my head sell for 30 or $40 a piece. I didn't bother to look the others up because at that price, I was like, well, yeah, I'll at least make decent money on them. Um, message the person, are they still available? And are they fairly complete? They said, yes, they're complete and still available. Okay. I'll be by at 11 o'clock to pick them up. So I could have been murdered, but uh, I did a little creeper stalking of the person that was selling like you do on Facebook. You kind of look and see if it's a real account and whatnot. And she looked like a very nice young girl. And it was a real account from what I could tell. So unless her entire account had, and life had been hijacked by a weirdo, um, I figured I was pretty safe. So I went to the house to pick that up. And uh, lo and behold, her and her husband and their little baby were there. It's super cute. And she's pregnant. Cute little couple in their 20s, late 20s. Um, they have an entire garage full of antiques and the contents of an antiques store that belonged to her grandmother. And then the father lives a little bit across town, and he also has an entire garage full of mm -hmm. antiques and collectibles. So I was able to pick through um, 
a good handful of items that they had right out in the open. And uh, we're going to be making arrangements for me to go through the rest of the stuff. And, Very uh, cool. And I you made didn't, just, you I didn't made die. Just buy, no, I didn't die, and I made it a fantastic connection. I went to buy a few board games for $15. I ended up spending $70 and bought everything pretty much that they showed me. Mm -hmm. um, and I... I am very interested in possibly buying out the entire contents of what they have based on just what I saw. So yeah, yeah I'm go. excited. Yep. So we're going to, I'm going to show you some of the stuff in the hall. I'm real excited and not even the games because the games are meh. Yeah. And I just have clothes as per usual. Well, I'm going to start then. All right, go ahead. So one of the things I want to talk about, and if you follow me on Instagram, I know that sometimes we'll repeat ourselves on the show and I, and a couple highlights here on Instagram. So I apologize for that, but uh, most of the people that follow us do not also follow on Instagram. It's a small percentage of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sandra, it puts the lotion on its back or it gets the hose again. Mm -hmm. Could have, could have been more related. <laughs> could have been. So one of the things I found was at Savers on Thursday, Katie drops me off while she goes to uh, the Buffalo Exchange usually because I can't stand to be in Buffalo Exchange for the hour that it takes her. Nothing wrong with that, but it, there's nothing there for me when she shops the men's stuff, the women's stuff, I have very little interest in buying for resale. So it bores the hell out of me. Um, but what I did find at this particular savers was uh, kind of the mother load of purses. I found not one, I still gotta figure out how this is opposite. <laughs> not one, not two, but five Anushka purses. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that know what Anushka is, this is the brand. This is what it looks like. The, the logo. <laughs> Anushka. So these purses are these beautiful soft leather bags that are hand painted and usually have flowers or animals or whatnot on them. And they're really pretty and they're really popular. So brand new, they sell for... Um, a few hundred dollars, like two to three hundred dollars. Uh, two of those are new and three of them are very gently used. And I paid a total of one hundred and eight dollars for all five. Um, the used ones I'll probably sell for at least one hundred to one hundred and thirty a piece. And then the newer ones will be closer to the one seventy five to two hundred price range. So it's a pretty cool uh, find. I was very excited. I walked in and they were all on the top shelf behind the case. And I was like, no. They can't be. They've got to be knockoffs or something cheap and not what it, I thought it was. And so I asked the lady to get them out from behind the counter. And I'm, she's like, which one? I'm like, all of them. <laughs> and then I look at all of them. I'm like, I'll take them all. She's like, really? Yes. And then uh, so I took all of them and I found a couple of other things while I was there. So that was my find of the day. I was yeah, pretty excited about this. That was pretty those. awesome. Reseller Projects says I've only found one of those in 12 years. I have never, so I have pretty. never, ever found one. Um, I've never even seen one in person, uh, actually. So yeah. I was pretty excited with that find. They're really, really nice. So I did pay off a little bit. Like I said, I paid $108. It wasn't like I paid $5 at a thrift store. But how much will you sell all five um, of them for? Total so probably? what did I just say? So like three, four, five, six, probably about 700 and change. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, pretty for all of them. Good. So one of the other things I picked up, um, you know, everybody probably has seen Scentsy in their house, right? So they've got this type of thing in their house, some type of Scentsy product. This I paid, it was $7.99, and then it was 25% off of that. This is from the Retired Lampshade Collection. Hmm. This is brand new in the box, and this will sell for about $65. Bucks. So I paid about $6. it will go to $65. So I'm, I like that as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, Karen says, Terapeak does show the best offer price as a selling price. If you click on the link to the listing, it shows you the price it was listed for. I just looked up one of my sales. There you awesome. go. Awesome. Good to know. Oh, there's Teresa. Teresa! All right. Looks like uh, Dana's got to get at skedaddle out of here, but we've mm -hmm. got Teresa to wrench it up over on the side there in the chat. So I'm going to quickly show one more thing, and then Katie can go, uh, show some things. Um, this is something that I grabbed for $5 yesterday from the person's house that I went to that was selling the board games. I saw it right away on a shelf and I had them specifically looking for um, any others they may have. But this is a vintage Montgomery Ward uh, catalog from 1960. It's a Christmas catalog. Remember, guys remember getting the Sears catalogs, the Montgomery Ward catalogs in the mail? 
and you would go through and you would check off all the toys that you wanted and you'd circle the toys you wanted for, for I mean, I remember getting the Toys R Us one and the Sears one, right? In yeah. the seventies. Um, these sell for a lot of money. So I paid $5. These sell for about 125. Uh, I think I can get a little bit more than this. Uh, especially because there are so few listed. I'm going to list mine real high, and then when Nostalgia comes around in a couple of months in Q4, I think I'm going to sell it for about 150 or so. Yeah. I'm kind nice. of excited. Pretty awesome. So Teresa's saying that she's having a hard time hearing today. All the volumes are up. Is anyone else having a hard time hearing? Because it shows our little uh, mic thing. It looks like it's at normal level. So uh, I just want to make sure that uh, is everybody else having volume issues at all or anyone else anyway you want me to show some stuff mm -hmm. okay so first of all i'm going to show this is pretty crazy that i found these but if you'll remember when we went to uh deseret industries mm -hmm. went to a couple of them um and at one of them i found two of these t-shirts i've already sold those two i think i sold one for 40 and the other one i sold for 55 and the one i sold for 40 actually went to the uk um so i made you know a good amount of money on that um, yeah, other people are saying, oh, I guess the volume's really soft. I don't know. Maybe we're just being quiet. Maybe, Maybe we're just not being as loud as normal. As usual. Sorry. Um, anyway, there's a small amount of interference. Hmm. So check it out, guys. Rocket Man. Remember the Rocket Man t-shirts that, that I found? Mm -hmm. Well, this time I found them at one of the savers, and I found three of them. So the other two that I had found were all, uh, both size large. Um this time I got one large and two extra larges. And this is, you know, the new movie that came out. And this is the, uh, it's like the tour t-shirt that's got like the schedule of all the premieres all over the world. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, so yeah, they were priced at $3.99, 25% off. So I paid three bucks a piece for these. Um, and I'm hoping this to, to get average $50 a piece for them. Um, and I'm pretty stoked that I got different sizes this time because I was like, uh, that's a no-brainer. They were all right next to each other. And then I was like going through all the rest of the t-shirts. I was really hoping that there would be a whole bunch more, like one mm -hmm. of the movie theaters. You know, I'm sure they had them at the, like, the, the different theaters. And I was hoping somebody had like gotten rid of all of them. Um, but anyway, so I was pretty excited about those. And then I found a couple of, uh, you know, I talked before about, you know, these Russell Athletic uh, sweatshirts. Basically any vintage blank sweatshirts do actually do pretty well. So like the, uh, Hanes, like, um, from ones from the eighties and the nineties, um, Russell athletic does really well. And so I'm always excited when I find them, they do better than like blank t-shirts. I think the blank sweatshirts are actually a little more desirable and I can usually sell them for, you know, 30, 35 bucks. Um, but this is like a really nice, uh, it's dead stock, definitely brand new condition. Um, really nice Russell athletic, sorry, turn that down there. Made in the USA, um, a nice bright red, Crispy, color, nice and crispy. Um, this was priced. This was priced at eight ninety nine, a little high, but twenty five percent off. And you know, I'll be able to sell it for about thirty five bucks probably. Um, but just a really cool. You know, red's a very popular color right now, so that should sell easily. So I'm gonna just pop in at the chat for a second. Uh, Jenna's deal is finally caught alive. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Super helpful for a beginner. Any tips for stay at home mom of a toddler trying to resell? Uh, well, since neither of us have been sellers with a toddler at home, um, that's probably a good question for our boss Facebook group. You're going to have better feedback there. Uh, Katie doesn't have any children. And when I started selling uh, full time, my daughter was already uh, like 13 or 14. So I really couldn't help you there. And I only have the one child. Um, the other thing about and what do you guys think of Poshmark? Um, neither one of us sell on Poshmark. So two questions. We don't really have good answers for you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, but there is another question, people talking about the volume and things like that. Here's the thing. We did change software because we had to. Uh, YouTube shut down um, one of the type of softwares that we've been using all along. But we are going to keep looking for a better one. Um, yeah. We're not crazy about this one. So we'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, it's okay. It's working for now. Um, okay. So then uh, same same savers I was at. I got this, uh, another Russell Athletic. Um, but this is for USC. It's in really nice condition. Definitely used. Um, and this one says assembled in El Salvador of U.S. components. So this is probably um, late 90s, uh, but it's in really nice condition. Microphone. What's that? You're going to hit the microphone. You just hit. Uh, and this is uh, USC, and this was only priced at three ninety nine, so I paid 3 bucks for it. And I guess I'll probably be able to sell That's it for cool. like $45. Um, so not a bad pickup. 
Um, uh, Grandma asked, what do you call a vintage tee that's very thin fabric, almost see-through? What kind of keywords would you use for that? Um, I usually put somewhere in there, I'll write, uh, you know, paper thin, vintage soft or something like that. Um, Cause yeah, it's like, it'll try to like show in the pictures that it's kind of see-through. Um, but anyway, all right, I'll show, and then I have one other sweatshirt that I got at uh, the good old Buffalo Exchange. Um, I didn't take that much in this week. I got like, I think I got like 55, 50, 55 dollars in credit. Mm -hmm. um, and I, but I bought like 120 something worth of stuff. Um, and I really love this sweatshirt right here. San Francisco 49ers, but it's got the Flintstones on it. It's got uh, Fred and Barney on it. Um, and I think it's a really cool 90s kind of Heather Gray um, sweatshirt. I've never seen this tag before, but you can tell from the from the the art itself, it says 1994, um, and it actually says you know it's got the Flintstones Hanna Barbera Productions on there 1994. Um, so I think I oh Sandra says wafer thin that's pretty good too. Oh wafer mm -hmm. wafer. Anyway, so I think this is an awesome sweatshirt. I just uh, listed this today. I think I listed it for to try to sell for like 70. I don't know. I don't know like how. I don't know how much the whole Flintstones thing will up the value, but we'll see. I'm always playing around, kind of like, you know, when it, if it's a really cool design, um, I just shoot for a really high price and I have the best offer. So it's like, why not see what, see what kind of action you get? <clears throat> G. Jasso says, uh, someone purchased one of my items on the 7th and has not paid yet. Doesn't like having uh, items held hostage or in limbo. You should uh, turn on unpaid item assistant through your eBay store. Um, and then you don't need to worry about it again. So if an item goes unpaid on the fourth day, eBay will automatically issue an unpaid item mm. reminder, and then it will close it out after a couple more reminders and automatically relist the item for you. That's the best way to handle it. Don't hang on to it. Don't worry about it. Don't hang your hat on it. I don't count my chickens until the money is in my PayPal account. I always have a handful or uh, of items that are unpaid that are sitting out there uh, at yeah. any given time. So... Yeah, you want to, you want to, I don't have mine on automatic just because I like to give my, my peeps a little bit of extra time and I'm okay with that. Um, this doesn't happen that much. Um, but then I do eventually, like after maybe a week, I will open an unpaid case. And um, Barbara's actually absolutely right. She says you should open a case, the buyer will get a strike and they're cracking down on them. Because um, they just want to avoid it because it is kind of, it's a pain in the ass, you know, when somebody makes an offer and then you accept and it gets unlisted, mm -hmm. you know, it takes, gets taken down and then you're waiting around and then if they don't pay, it's like it ends up taking like over a week for you to be able to actually list it. Your again. item is out of commission for yeah, 10 Yeah, and it's a bummer and, it, and it, it, it may not be that big of a deal most of the time, but then when you get into the holidays, if you have something that's like super, um, you know, like timely like it's something that you think will sell really well during the holidays and it gets out of commission for over a week i mean that can be a real pain in the ass if it's like a high valued item um so but i'm really sure. hoping that with managed payments like once they actually completely take over like uh, later in 2020 i'm hoping that that's actually going to become uh, a non-issue and they're going to be doing things just like they do on like mercari um where you can you make an offer and you that's a binding thing and it's like if they accept it automatically charges your card so Sandra is telling everybody that she has nice hooters. Oh, okay. Um, apparently she won a wet t-shirt contest in her 20s. Wow. For a $50 bar tab. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, and she just said this was not sent through an offer. That, so then you should have uh, automatic payment required on your items and that won't mm -hmm. happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, sure. So this is another thing that I picked up. I don't always pick these things up, but I will say, so Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart is one of those brands that's hit or miss, right? So Martha Stewart has been sold at Kmart and has been sold, uh, the line has been sold in many, many places, different types of Martha Stewart type of things. One of the things that I will always pick up is Martha Stewart bedding. If it's new in the package, Martha Stewart bedding sells very well. Uh, and it was sold at Kmart, believe it or not, but it was also sold other places. Uh, considering it was sold at Kmart, it was very good quality stuff. And because of that, it has retained an almost cult following or, or value. Um, so for example, I picked up this new in package. Uh, it's just a coverlet. It's a, it's a twin size coverlet in like a sage green, celery green. It's the Madelassé or, or that's, that's the, uh, the, the style of the coverlet. Ooh, Madelassé. And, and it's cotton. It's new in the package. 
and uh, Kmart price on it. So let's see, it's vintage. So the tag on the back says 1998. Ooh. And uh, I paid $10, and this is going to sell for about $65 plus shipping. That's crazy. So it's one of those things that you'd want to pick up. Even though you won't necessarily you won't necessarily think of Martha Stewart as being high end or high resale value because it was sold at Kmart, um, her different lines have sold at different places over the years depending on what the item is. But the the bedding was sold at Kmart uh, in the '90s, and as a matter of fact, it's some of the best sheets I had ever bought. I was poor in the '90s. I was young, and I bought several, and they were they sold really well. Um, so let's see. This is another item that I picked up. It, it was, um, this was 50% off. So this was the, this was a $10 book. It's a heavy hard color cover book. Uh, it has a little bit of wear on the cover. It's a canvas cover, but this particular book uh, retailed for $75 and still sells for about 45 or $50 on Amazon. That's crazy. It's a book uh, about Pixar and uh, you know John Lasseter, who was uh, who was basically the man that that created Pixar, and tells about all the different Disney Pixar movies, and has like different pictures and things like that in it. Huh, that's really cool. Um, I'm not someone that necessarily picks up books very often either. It's just one of those that caught my eye. Mm -hmm. So I did pick up two uh, games this week, not at the person's house that I went to, but games that I picked up at Savers that I wanted to talk about that are both really, really good uh, games that are bolo, definitely bolo games. I'm talking more than $25, $30, $35 games that you can always pick up at garage sales or uh, or Savers or Salvation Army or what have you. Uh, board games are usually 2 or $3 a piece max, right? So this is one of them. This is a vintage, it's a Stratomatic baseball. Uh, I do believe this game is complete. I'm going to have to do a little bit more investigating on it, but this particular game should sell for a minimum of $100. And I paid $3 for it. What year is this version from? I think this version is from the 80s. Might be late 80s or early 90s. Hmm. Oh, 1979. There you go. So this one may even go a little uh, higher than that. Very cool. Um... And then the other one, this is definitely a bolo. If you find this, it's Clue, the office version. If this is brand new and uh, and wrapped, this would get, you know, if it was sealed, this would get maybe $150, $160 uh, new. But even used this, and I paid $2 for this? I paid, yeah, yeah, $3. I paid $3 for this. Used, I will still get about $75 plus shipping if this is complete. Uh, I think we should go ahead and probably test it out and make sure it's You want to play it first? Yeah. Because I, okay. so Vicky's never watched all of The Office. I think, have you even seen a whole episode before? Oh, yeah. I've seen several. Okay. But she's not, she hasn't seen all of them. I've watched all of them because it's hilarious. And uh, it's, I've just recently been watching, going through all of them again. And I only have like ooh, a season and a half left. I'm kind of sad about it. But I would totally be down with playing that game. But I wanted to... Give a shout out to Giovanni. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Giovanni Ganagnum. Ganagnum. This is not even close. Anyway, Giovanni says, I live in Vegas too. I love you guys. Well, we love you. And if you ever run into us with Sabres, you should come and say hi. Because pretty much every, I'd say every week that we go out to mm -hmm. go uh, um, sourcing here in Vegas, somebody we usually run somebody into approaches at least one the person. person somebody approaches us now i get because we're in vegas we get we have a higher concentration i think of people following us in the vegas area because i know when i started selling um i would definitely look for people who were selling like in oregon uh resellers in oregon so we do have like a higher concentration like i think we've yet to be approached in a different state when we've gone out thrifting i was um, once, once in, okay. uh, in california mm -hmm. yeah because it happens like every week here in vegas so and then we have the people who we regularly run into so that we know yeah that we know but um but anyway yeah so you should definitely come up and say hi to us uh, if you ever see us out and about and Corey um, has already said uh, you should come to our meetup. We do do a monthly meetup. Yeah. Uh, Corey, if you want to go ahead and try to get that uh, link to the meetup group in there, that's great. It's just for locals. Um, but it's uh, if you're ever in town or you're in Vegas, the last Tuesday of the month, we hold a meetup. And uh, we'd love to have you come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, your turn. Grandma Cheap Cheap loves your nail color. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so everything else I have is good old t-shirts, everybody. 
Um, I didn't really pick up a ton of stuff this week. Most of the stuff that I bought was I have like two Buffalo. more uh, sets of things to mm -hmm. talk about. So yeah, but I still mm -hmm. have like I actually have some back stock of stuff that I still need to take pictures of, t-shirts and stuff. So I haven't really had a huge need to buy lots. Um, but I, at Buffalo Exchange. I'm always talking about this. Uh, I did find another No Fear t-shirt. Um, this one's more of a 90s one. I really like the 80s ones, the ones that say Dangerous Sports on them. Uh, but this one's cool, too. It's got some wear to it, but made in the U.S. Um, no Fear tag. And uh, I think, you know, the back, you know, the ones in the 90s had all these, like, uh, kind of ridiculous sayings on them. This one says, the older I get, the better I was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think this this would be great for, like, you know. Me? What? <laughs> No, it's like, because in my mind, what that means is like, you know, you, do you have, do you know anybody who like they're still stuck in their high school years and all they do is talk about like how great the old days were? Glory days. The glory. Oh, okay. You're going to bust out a song, no. huh? Huh? No. Nope. Ah, what? No. Nope. Anyway, but I always like getting these and, uh, you know, they did, this one was only priced like $9. Like they only had a uh, price $9 at Buffalo Exchange, hmm. which most of their t-shirts are 10 and above. Um, so I was pretty stoked about that, but I should be able to sell this for 45 bucks. That's what, that's my goal anyway. All right. All 40, right. 45. Um, here's the one that I paid the most for. I actually paid $20 for this t-shirt and it's a little teeny tiny thing. Um, and it's like super worn out and speaking of paper thin, paper thin, definitely yeah. paper thin, doesn't really have a super exciting, uh, you know, graphic on the front of it, but it is the running rebels, which is the UNLV basketball team. So UNLV, their mascot is the Rebels, but the Running Rebels is specifically the basketball team. And this is from 1983, um, the top 20 teams in the Associated Press College Basketball Poll. And it says that UNLV is number one. Uh, but yeah, I paid $20 for this. Now, again, I did take in a bunch of stuff to trade. So really out of my pocket, maybe I paid like $15 for this t-shirt, $12 to $15. Uh, but I think it's a super cool uh, almost like a, a baseball tee with the colored sleeves and the ringer, the ringer collar. Um, but I haven't put this one up yet. I'm hoping, I, uh, I, I found that UNLV stuff really does sell super well. So I'm hoping I can sell this for, it does for you anyway, 70 to a hundred bucks. Cause it is just a really cool t-shirt. Um, the next one I have, and I'll take a break here to go back over to you. So the people aren't just looking at t-shirt after t-shirt after t-shirt, but I love this one. I like, I'm, I'm digging the volleyball stuff. Arkansas. Sandra the Cougar. My wife was negative six in 1983. <laughs> Arkansas Spike Club. Uh, I think this is this is really cool. Um, this is, I guess, I, this is the Arkansas. Thanks. Sorry. Apologize. Uh, the Arkansas, what's the, the uh, mascot? It's like the... Razorback. Is it Razorbacks? Yeah. But I think this is like such a, such an 80s. Did you hear me with my sports reference? Right yeah, off the top of my head, I didn't even look. I didn't even look at the thing. This is such a great like late 80s, early 90s. That uh, was sports knowledge right there. It was t-shirt, but this is like a volleyball t-shirt, and I think it's super cool. Anyway, fan, freaking fantastic. All right, um, I'll do one more, and then we'll we'll hit it back on over to you. How do you feel about that? All right, do you have more? Or is this? Yeah, it? I have. I have more, okay, just t-shirts though. Um, and this one. And this is another one, paper, paper thin. This is an 80s Nathan's Hot Dogs uh, t-shirt. What are you pointing at? Yeah, there's a little bit of staining on the back. A little, um, little schmutz in the back. But, you know, can't really do anything about it. Um, and so this one, that was cool. I haven't listed this one yet either, but it is, it is paper, paper thin, super soft, um, really cool t-shirt. And so I, I would wear that. Like, you'd wear it? Mm -hmm. Well, too bad. <laughs> I haven't looked up how the Nathan's Just Hot Dog stuff does, but I paid probably like 10, 10, 11 bucks for this. So, um, I should be able to get minimum 30 bucks for it, but I'll have to look and see what, how the old vintage Nathan's Hot Dogs t-shirts do. Christine popping in the chat. Whoa! Christine is someone that's local that we run into a lot when we go sourcing on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Um, she says, Hey, anyone going to magic this week in Vegas? I've never been to magic. It's kind of like ASD on crack from what I hear. And I believe that's yeah. one of the ones that's not a free show. Uh, but I've never been. All right. All right. I can dig it. All right. Back over to you. Take a break from the t-shirts. Yeah. So I'm going to get into the super cool vintage stuff that I got from this, uh, this quick garage sale. I don't know. Not even the garage sale from the people I bought the board games from. So one of the things that I found was this really, really cool hop along Cassidy lamp. So this is a light. It hangs. This is from the fifties, vintage fifties. 
it's got, it's like, got one a, of those Christmas bulbs Yeah, it's got it. a Christmas bulb in it, but it could be any color uh, bulb. And it's made to look like a gun in a holster, and it's got this great decal. It's like this glass. It's milk glass. It's made by a company called Aladdin. Um, it does need to be rewired, so it has a wiring issue in the back, but you'd want to rewire it anyway if something's this old for the most part. This is uh, the best one that I've seen as far as condition goes. And, um, nice. you know, based on the prices I paid for everything, I paid around 3 or $4 for this, and I'm going to sell it for over 100 um, so it's super cool. I like Hopalong this, Cassidy. I like this little switch. Yeah, it hangs on the wall, and it's like a little nightlight. So you'd like, you'd click on this little, break this stupid camera. <laughs> I hate how it's backwards. You'd click on that. Mm -hmm. um, very nice, very nice. So this was something I picked up at Savers. I paid two ninety nine. dollars It's just a uh, makeup kit by a, by a company called Youthology. And uh, I've got it listed right now. It was $2.99. It's new in the package. It is not expired. And um, I've got it listed for over $100 right now. It's one of those uh, mail order makeup face eye serum things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this I picked up in the same garage sale again, 3 or $4 a piece. This is uh, Roy Rogers uh, crayon set. I have not opened it yet. The person that was selling it, wrapped it in plastic. This is not the original plastic, but it is complete. There's a little note on it that says it's complete. And again, I just picked it up yesterday, so I haven't gone through it yet. Uh, no damage to the box or anything like that. It's in really nice shape. I think I can get about 65 or $75 for this. Super cool. Yeah, you got so much good stuff there. Oh my God, I really did. And it's just crazy that you, hopefully you're going to be able to get a whole bunch more, but you got already just with your one little purchase. Yeah, I've got to, I'm going to do over $1,000 gross on the items that I did purchase. So this item, I paid $5 for this as well. This is made by a company called Unique Art Manufacturing Company. This is a tin lithograph type of vintage item. This is from the 1930s. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, it's got, this is the Lincoln Tunnel. And uh, the New Jersey entrance and the New York entrance, this represents the Lincoln Tunnel. And it's got these little moving cars on it that are on a, a little mm -hmm. pull thing. It's missing a... Yeah, I'll try to show the graphics. Yeah, the information on it. Is so, it what's it missing? Mm-hmm. I said, what's it missing? It's missing. There's a little uh, metal guy on the on the uh, like policeman that stands in the middle, but this is still in really good, really good shape. Yeah, this is super cool. Um, so this I'll probably sell for at least a hundred, even in the condition that it's in. It's really cool. All this old tin lithograph stuff sells really well, and I love it. So it's got, even says on the side that it's the Lincoln Tunnel. Mm -hmm. This way. <laughs> so uh, I love this kind of stuff. This It's a twin, it's actually, it's a, um, it's a tin wind up and then it's got this little on off switch, but the wind up part is not working. And that doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean that uh, if it were working, it would be worth more, but it's not worthless just because it's not working. A lot of people buy these things, they collect yeah. them, they display them. Uh, so... Jenna Dell says, great bolos. So cool to see all the vintage stuff you guys find. What are your top favorite categories of items to sell? For me, I love vintage toys, just like what I just picked up. A lot of mm -hmm. this vintage stuff. That's one of my favorite things to sell. Vintage toys and vintage women's clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Those and I, I only things. do men's clothing and uh, mm -hmm. preferably vintage. I do a lot of streetwear stuff. So really the three categories that I sell in pretty much exclusively um, or jackets, sweatshirts, and t-shirts. You know, occasionally I'll get some other stuff, but like shoes, shoes and sometimes. stuff like that. But my three top three favorites are jackets, sweatshirts, and t-shirts, um, vintage stuff. And uh, so that's the only thing that I buy. So it can get a little boring. I'm, you know, I'm lucky to have you uh, doing these mm -hmm. hauls with me because it would get super, super boring um, if all I was doing was showing you one t-shirt after another. So you get to bust out all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You got anything else? You I have a lot more. You want to do your... Um... The and last of my t-shirts t -shirt. and then I'll yeah. do my stuff. So <clears throat> this was interesting. I got this at, uh, excuse you. Sorry, I'm moving the back the box. <laughs> so, uh, so I got this t-shirt at Buffalo exchange. I think I, I spent like 10 bucks on it. I haven't done any research on it yet. It says Danny Hamill. So this is a motocross t-shirt, a nineties motocross t-shirt based on just the style and then the, um, this Fruit of the Loom tag made in the USA. It's a 90s tag. Um, but it says Danny Hamill, and it, it says, best of the best, 
Um, and then on the back, it says more than 100 overall wins, and it lists all the wins. But it also has three different signatures on it, and I really have no idea whose signatures they are. Um, this one looks like it could actually be maybe his signature. I don't know, but I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, and then there's somebody else's signature up here in this corner, and then the back there's another one. Um, so really, I think I paid like $10 for this, but it's just a cool t-shirt, cool motor press t-shirt. And then I'm really curious as to what, uh, whose signatures are on it, if I can even figure that out. So it might be difficult because I really only know the one person's name. And so it's going to be difficult to just randomly figure out the rest of them. So I may not be able to, um, but it's just a cool t-shirt. I like the motor press stuff. And then this next one, this is an interesting one that I kind of need to find more information about because this t-shirt is single stitch, made in the U.S., um, but it's got kind of an interesting tag. It's like, I don't know what is up with this tag. Um, it doesn't have any particular brand on it, um, but it says Ultimate Women's Wrestling, and it looks like a vintage t-shirt, but the little bit that I could find about the whole Ultimate Women's Wrestling is that it's newer. So I'm not entirely sure if this is vintage or not, or if maybe there was an Ultimate Women's Wrestling maybe in the 80s, and then this whatever I was able to find that's actually online is newer. I'm not really sure. So if anybody has any idea, or you want to like do some uh, Googling and stuff, and maybe see if you, you can find it, figure it out, let me know what you know. But this is just a really cool, I found this in the women's section, because um, I will go, I do go and look in the women's section real fast with the t-shirts. I see, I look for like the wide collars and the, uh, and the single stitch to see if uh, a t-shirt pop, pops out at me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is a cool one. Uh, I got two more. Two more, guys. Two more, and then I'll finish up with about five or six of these, more of these vintage toys, and then we'll, we'll be out of your hair. Allison said, and I was worried your show would be over. We haven't even hit an hour and a half. Come on. Come on. Um... Anyway, this t-shirt I think is pretty ridiculous. It says Brotherhood Gym, where the brothers work it out. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it's pretty amazing. Um, single stitch t-shirt. It's got a heck of a graphic on it. I yeah. really like that one. This is another Fruit of the Loom uh, 90s. I have seen late 80s with this tag, uh, but most likely early mid 90s. Um, just a cool single stitch uh, with a, an amazing graphic on it. I love it. I love it. And then the last one here, guys, didn't, haven't done any research on this. It says 1987. This is some sort of uh, French, some sort of Paris thing. I don't, I don't speak French. I don't know what any of that says. I don't know what this is. Some sort of aviation thing from 1987. I don't know if it's their military what does it say? Turn or around what. Turn so around I can see it. It's okay. just a, it's an, an yeah, aeronautic salon. That's, that's, there's nothing in French, really. It's not, it's not French words. It's the name of whatever the well, event whatever. Does. Don't mock me, woman. You're like, I don't speak French. Well, listen, it's just the go, name of the go, thing. Go find some sour cream to throw out, wench. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's nice and crispy. Yeah. It's a really cool t-shirt from 1987. Uh, I, I just like the graphics on it. And uh, I'll have to figure out like what, if this is just like a, if this is, has, is military or if it's just like some private aviation kind of um, show for the public or whatever. But mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. I, I, I like this kind of stuff. I know you do. There you go. Don't yep. touch me with thrift store. <laughs> thrift store clothes on my face. And that's yes. it. Those are all my t-shirts. Now, why don't we look at all your guns? All right. Well, first I'm going to show this uh, antique uh, Stanley planer that I picked up, again, about 3 or $4. Uh, and this is actually already researched for me. I got the number and everything because, this again, nice. this was an antique dealer. So she had all the information. I paid 3 or $4. This particular one sells for about 75 as is. Um, Very cool. And then, these are my favorite things that I got, actually. Uh, I got a whole bunch of vintage cap guns. Pew, 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 pew! So, this is a Gene Autry uh, cap gun with the belt, and it's in excellent condition. I've got a couple different guns. I've got to figure out which ones go with which belt, but this is one of the Gene Autry guns, and uh, they still work. Um, there's nothing wrong with selling these on eBay, but someone made a comment under my post and I want to make sure that I reiterate this. If you do sell cap guns, you do need to get the orange stoppers for the ends of them. First of all, you cannot sell them without the orange stoppers. Is this just like a standard size or it's what? A, yeah, you can, it's a, there's a standard size, but you can also use just the orange molded ear, um, 
mic earplugs, earplugs, those work well too for older guns because you can't, they're not a standard size, so to speak. So you've got to photograph the entire picture of the gun itself. Uh, you can't show just parts of the gun. It has to be very, very clear. There's some specific verbiage that eBay requires for you to put in the listing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got to make sure you have that verbiage in there. So you don't want to get your items pulled because it does happen. But if you have all of the things covered and you dot your I's and cross your T's, you can absolutely sell them. You can make really good money. This particular gun and holster set should sell for at least $150, maybe more. What? I used to love cap guns when I was a kid. Obviously, the cap guns I had were from the 80s. They were not uh, from the 50s or anything like that. But I used to love, like, you would go to the store and you would buy, like, the mm -hmm. little thing of the little cap guns and stuff the little, to put in there, and they're really fun to play with. Yeah, and this is another one that is, uh, this is not a, a name brand one, but this is still vintage and has the gun that goes with it. And this one will sell for another probably $50 to $75. <clears throat> Allison says that we're going to get demonetized for firing a gun on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe so. <laughs> uh, this is a G another one of the Gene Autry guns. This one sells for about $65. Oh, it's cute and tiny. And um, let's see it. Just for an example, this particular, this is part of a, uh, it's a it's a holster that's this cardboard and metal that is made for uh, the Lone Ranger. This is just a part of it. And this particular part, I don't even have the belt. There's no gun. Sorry. And this will sell for at least $50 as is. Yeah, I totally remember having the cat guns like this, and this one, this is the kind that you put the little roll in there, as opposed to then the, the other ones where they're like the little circle, and you put it in. And there's a couple of them that are, I do have the rolls for. That's really cool. And then I'm just going to show these last two items, and this is not everything, by the way. This is just uh, the majority of the of the items I picked up yesterday. Ooh, that one's cool. You these last those. two items are made by Marks. These are tin lithograph airplanes. Wow. And this is the kind that you use a key. It's got a key to make it move on the bottom. So I'm going to see if you can see that if I oh, show yeah, you. Oh, yeah, you can see that right there. Okay. So it's, got a, it's like a friction plane, but you're going to use the little key. Most of the time the key is missing and the plane doesn't work. Uh, this is missing some pieces. Like it doesn't have like all of the little things that stick up on the plane and it doesn't have the propeller. Uh, but still, as is, this should sell for at least $100. That's awesome. Ooh, I like that one better. And this is the one that I really like. This is the same type of thing. This is by Marks as well. Marks is M-A-R-X. And uh, let me see if I can find it. Their logo is this little circle, like bullseye with the title in it. Let me see if I get it. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. So this one is like a military plane, right? So it's got the little guns the little gun shooters on the side. Mm -hmm. This was so big in the 50s. Kids loved to play war. We had World War II was had just uh, just finished, right? So kids like to play war, and that's what they did. So this type of thing, um, this will sell for a, probably $150. If this were in better condition, I could get at least two or $300 for it. This one is particularly rare. That was the key, too. It has the key as well, and both of them are still working. Yeah, that's awesome. So... Uh, Teresa asks, how do I clean up these toys? I'm going to take a, a warm, wet cloth, and I'm going to scrub them down a little bit. I don't do too much. They're te Generally, they're, they're always found dusty and dirty like that, and uh, buyers are not against buying them like that. There's not much you can do. It's not like I'm going to touch it up in any way or try to sand off any of the, you know, the rust or anything like that. I will clean off the surface dirt, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Allison, she got all those from, it was a Facebook marketplace ad. Um, somebody is selling all of their like grandma's old stuff and she's going to go back and get more. So I paid very, very little for all of these items, three to $4 a piece. And at least, you know, from what you saw there and what I've shown, uh, you can see what the prices are on vintage toys. So this is the type of stuff that I used to specialize in back when I lived in Rhode Island. I loved vintage toys and antique toys, and it's just not something I find out here very often. So this is kind of like the mother load that I've reached with this home, and it's my type of stuff. Like, I love it. I love the research involved. I love the cleanup. I love the listing. I know what I'm selling, and I know what the things are worth, and I'm super excited mm -hmm. to get in and find more stuff because I am so damn sick of clothes, and, but I know they do well. Um, but I really prefer to sell this kind of thing. There's mm -hmm. just not a lot of it around here. It's hard to find. So Lauren says, uh, hey, I'm wondering if anyone else is having this issue. My eBay fees were deducted and completed from my PayPal over $1,000, but that was three days ago and still is not credited on my eBay account balance. And then she also said, 
that her date used to be the 15th through the 17th, because I don't know why they can't just tell you what day it's going to happen on. It's always like a range. Uh, but now it got moved up to the 8th to the 10th when I added auto payment card. Is that normal? Um, so as far as it, if it hasn't been credited to your account yet, I would go ahead. I mean, it's been, what's today? Today's the 11th. I mean, you might, if it's been a few days, you might want to give um, eBay a call maybe tomorrow or something. Um, as far as the dates changing, I had the same thing happen. Mine used to be, it would say like the 15th to the 17th. Um, and then I noticed when I got my bill just recently, it actually said the 8th to the 10th. And I was like, that's weird. Um, but I already paid mine anyway, because I, I paid, I, I pay ahead of time so I can put it on, um, uh, to get to Southwest miles and whatnot. Um, so I've already paid mine, but I did notice that happened. I don't know why they changed the dates around. I'm not sure what the difference is. Um, I don't know. Have you noticed that yours is different at all? Cause yours is like, it's like everybody's either the beginning of the month or the middle of the month. So I know yours is like the first to the, when, when does it usually come out? Um, uh, so mine is ends on the, you know, my, my period is, it goes from the 15th to the 15th and then it comes out, uh, usually like the 30th or the first or the 31st around Yeah. There. So you haven't noticed that yours has changed at all? It hasn't. Okay. Maybe look at the next time you get your bill when it tells you that your bill is mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. Um, see if it's changed at all. Um, but anyway, uh, so what, um, I think that's everything that we have to say for today, right? Mm -hmm. Look at that, an hour and a half. We didn't even do that much. We didn't even go that crazy. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. We did yeah. an hour and a half. I'm yeah. impressed. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm gonna, you're going to need to give me some of those now. All right, now, uh, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew it. But see, I usually do, when I shoot the guns, it's usually for, uh, I don't know if my giant finger is going to be able to fit. This is like a... I need a better size. This one, that's not going to work for me. That's not going to work for me. Not like this one. I need a different one. I don't have, I have slender fingers, but that's like, I don't know. Uh, usually I'm doing the one for Nate, um, Red Neckerson Resales. Um, but Sandra just did a $5 super chat. <laughs> what is this? You didn't tell me you had a ray gun. Oh, no, this is a... <laughs> That's just embarrassing. I thought it was going to be like one of those ray guns where you shoot it and then like you pull the trigger and then like it sparks and stuff. No. Oh, you're the worst. Will you just do it? No. Already? No. Quit yelling at me. Anyway, this is for you, Sandra. Pew, 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 pew. But usually I do like a yeehaw, but that's, 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 the yeehaw is reserved for Nate. All right. Pew, pew. And then this. I don't know. I'm going to get you with my gun. What is this? Listen, <laughs> I didn't create the thing. Uh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Um, and uh, that's about it. All right, that's it. That's all we got. Thanks for coming and watching the show. We love you guys. We will be back on Wednesday for our Boss Up and List show that we do every Wednesday at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m., or in the afternoon for you uh, East Coasters and whatnot. Uh, but we appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. And, uh, you know, if you're not in the Boss Facebook group, you should definitely join it because we love you guys. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and... Uh, Here's the cowboy hats. Well, apparently I needed to wear a cowboy hat and... Uh... <laughs> no, Victoria, I was hoping it was one of those spark guns because like, that's what I had. I had the ray gun where you pull that. That's really weird. I've never seen one like that. Me either. It's actually made by a company that does those ray guns, but this is not a ray gun, clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, thank you guys so much for coming. We appreciate it. And we will see you later. Join the Boss Facebook group if you haven't already. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up if you like the show. If you didn't like the show, give it a thumbs down. That's fine. Um, and we will see you all later. All right. Bye. Bye.